What's up, what's up, what's up? Good afternoon, middle school. It's Mr. Gomez coming at you live from Miss Roche's class. Remember this class? Yeah, you guys remember it, right? So I'm just here uh, doing some work, making sure we're available for you guys. Remember, if there's anything that you guys need, that you can contact me or Mr. Silva directly at the school, 619-582-1822. Call us. Let us know what's popping, okay? If you guys need to email us and talk to us about something, my email is igomez at darnellcharter.net and Miss De Silva's is cdesilva at darnellcharter.net, okay? So if things are going on at home and you're not feeling good or you're not feeling your best today, hit us up, okay? That's what we're here for. We wanna make sure that you know that you're not alone and you know that uh, somebody's here that cares and, and wants to make sure that you're feeling okay. All right, that's out of the way with. Um, today, I need to do a presentation for you. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, hold on a second. Let's do this, share. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, so right now I should be presenting my screen to you so you guys should see it too, right? On the screen, it says loading. Okay, start with hello, September 2020. So you guys in, this, in middle school know that last year um, we did a thing where we asked everybody from the school to come into our office and dip their hand in some green paint and then put their handprint on a giant uh, sheet that we had hanging in the in the counseling office and then we took that giant sheet and we put it outside and it looked like a big tree when everybody had their hands on it right because those were the leaves of the tree that was an activity uh that was from this program start with hello okay we have uh that same week again this year so i'm gonna lead you guys through a little presentation about what exactly that was because i don't think um i was I explained start with hello at all to you guys, okay? So here it is. What is start with hello? The start with hello program, it's a national program that works to eliminate all the incidents of violence within our school, okay? So, you know, sometimes people that get bullied end up turning around and become violent in a school. Uh, they attack people or at the very worst, you know, they could bring in guns to the school and, and shoot up the school. And that's a lot of the reason why uh, some of those crazy uh, violent incidents happen because people are bullied at school or ignored. Uh, so the Start With Hello program believes that they need to be able to work with people within the schools to be able to ensure that those incidents of violence don't happen. And it's not just like the whole shoot up the school school thing, but also, you know, like the bullying and physical fights that happen between people at schools because of, you know, somebody might say something about somebody else's mom or something like that, and then a fight breaks out, right? So start with hello. Their whole effort is to try to keep all that to a minimum uh, and stop it eventually, hopefully, right? So what they do is they train school staff and then some students and how to do some very powerful things and they may be powerful but they're not huge grandiose things they're small things that promote inclusion right making sure that everybody feels included and that support students that are showing signs of loneliness and so social isolation okay so for a lot of you guys you guys know what the feeling of loneliness is i mean i hope that nobody ever has to feel lonely but i do realize that at certain times we all do feel lonely right and there's probably been times in your life uh in most of your guys' lives that you felt lonely uh it's a normal human emotion and uh but it's not one that none of us like and so it's not something that i i want any of you guys to go through okay so i'm going to explain the difference between what loneliness is and social social isolation okay so loneliness is an overwhelming feeling of being out, left out, or not included, right? And when they mean overwhelming, it means just kind of it takes your over your whole life if you feel that you're not being included in stuff, right? So if you're not being included in school stuff, you might go home and it messes up your life at home because you're not feeling welcomed in school. 
Uh, social, social isolation, on the other hand, is not having frequent interaction with friends. This one right now I know is important for all you guys because of COVID-19, it's left most of us without the ability to hang out with our friends like we used to like, right? We don't get to come to school no more and, you know, have nutrition break and have lunch and hang out with our friends before and after school. You know, a lot of you guys don't even get to go like to the movies with your friends no more or hang out and ride skateboards and stuff like that anymore after school. So social isolation is something that probably most of us have been experiencing and it's not cool. It's not something that it makes us feel very good at all, right? So what happens when we're actually feeling lonely or so socially isolated, right? People that feel either of those two ways tend to do things that cause harm to themselves or to others, okay? Sometimes when you're feeling lonely at school, you may pull away from the people at home and your friends, right? Because you're feeling left out at school. So you're going to pull away from those ones that the people that actually love you. And it hurts them and it hurts you, right? They don't know why you're pulling away. And, you know, the fact that you're hiding all day in your room and don't want to talk to nobody, they might think that they're the ones that have caused that in you, okay? And... Uh, they're not going to know why you don't love them anymore. So it, it hurts family and friends. Uh, if you're feeling lonely, you might not have an easy time learning. Part of our, our job as counselors is to make sure that you're ready to learn every day, right? And if you're thinking about what's going on as far as you being lonely or, or people not including you, learning isn't going to be your priority, right? So we got to make sure that that is your priority. Um, and then unfortunately, people might choose to hurt themselves or others when they feel lonely or isolated. You know, unfortunately, the reality of living in, you know, 2020 is that, you know, people do harm to other people. And a lot of times that comes out in schools. A lot of times that comes out in workplaces. So um, we got to make sure we do whatever we can to make sure that those feelings of loneliness or isolation uh, are minimum at, at, at the most, right? As small as we, they can be. Now, here's my question to you. Have you ever felt lonely or isolated from people? I know I have in my own personal life, right? It's not a cool feeling. It's not something that anybody wants to live through. Uh, but like I said, I hope you haven't had to. But I, I realize the reality of for most of us is, yeah. So start with hello says that we can fix things if we start with these three steps, okay? One, we got to see somebody alone and we got to recognize that they're alone. And because for most of us, we go about our life on a daily basis and we're not really worried about other people we don't know, right? We're worried about our parents. We're worried about our younger brothers and sisters. We're worried about our best friends. Um, but we're not worried about, you know, the person at Northgate or Food for Less that's walking alone, pushing a cart by themselves or uh, the person that's sitting at the lunch table by themselves having lunch alone. Right. So the very first step to helping is recognizing that there is someone alone out there and seeing them. OK. The second thing is we actually want to re we actually have to want to reach out to help. It doesn't matter how many people you see alone. If you're not willing to help, you're not going to do anything for anybody. Okay. So you got to want to reach out to help. And the way you do that is here is where their whole program starts is starting with hello. Okay. So if I see somebody alone and I'm willing to help, all I have to do is walk up to them and say, hello, my name is Mr. Gomez. What's yours? Right. And then hopefully build some kind of conversation to let them know that they're not alone in this world or they're not alone today and we're willing to be there for them as a friend or as somebody that cares enough to help them in whatever they need okay so three steps to to helping to make this a better place a better school a better world okay you see someone alone you're willing to reach out and help and you start with hello okay it's as simple as that I'm going to give you guys a couple of scenarios. You guys know what a scenario is? That means just a situation, okay? And then you guys are going to help me figure out what the right answer to these scenarios are. So here's the first one. 
you're at school, you're in the middle of a good four square game, okay? Let's say you guys are in the middle of, of a volleyball game because you guys are a little older. You guys don't play four square too much. Uh, the ball goes out and you have to chase it. When you pick it up, you see a student you've never seen before. They're sitting by themselves against the wall of the library. They have their head in their knees and their arms wrapped around their legs. What should you do? Okay. So here's the possible solutions to that. So the possible answers to scenario one is A, you pick up your ball, you run back to the game and finish recess because you only have five minutes of recess left. Right? That's a possibility and some people would do that. B, you run over to a supervision staff and tell them about the student you noticed and then go back to playing your game. That's a possibility. A lot of people might choose to do that, right? Or C, you throw the ball back to the game, walk over to the student, sit next to him and say, hey, my name's Johnny. What's yours? For me personally, I think that all of these are answers that I've seen done here at the at school campus, okay? Uh, but I would encourage you guys to do number C. Let me tell you what's what's the deal with B, okay? So first of all, A is just somebody in their own life and only worried about themselves and, you know, that's all they're about is them, okay? B, if you run over to tell supervision staff and tell them about the student, yeah, you're doing a good thing. You've noticed somebody that is alone, right? And that you're willing to help, okay? So you got two out of the three steps done, but then you go back to playing your game. Now, for most kids your age, do you think that they'd rather have a supervision staff like Mr. Chris or Miss Maria or even myself come over to them? Or they would have, rather have a student their own age come over to them and say, hey, how are you doing today? Yeah, for most kids, they probably choose somebody their own age to talk to, right? So the best answer for this is, you know, throw the ball back to the game, walk over to the student, sit next to him and say, hey, my name is Johnny, what's yours? And hopefully that'll start a conversation, right? You guys can get a conversation going. All you guys are very uh, intelligent young, young people and you guys could have a nice conversation with somebody that was feeling lonely. Here's scenario number two, okay? So you're with your mom at Northgate buying groceries. You're walking back to the car to help your mom put the groceries in the car. You see an older man having trouble pushing his cart filled with groceries up the hill towards his car. What could you do? All right, think about it. Let's go on to the solutions and figure out what we could do. So, A, hurry up and put your groceries in the car and jump back into the car before your mom gets mad for not helping her. That's probably what a lot of us would do because I don't want my mom to get mad at me and, you know, yell at me because I'm over there playing around or not doing what she expects, right? How about B, run over, grab the older man's cart and start pushing it up the hill for him quickly so you can get back into your car before your mom leaves you. Wow, all right. Or C, Ask your mom first, Ma, is it okay if I go help the man push his cart to the car? And then when she says, yeah, I'll keep an eye on you, you go ask the man, sir, hi, my name is Johnny, and I wanted to know if I can help you. So here, letter A is just somebody that's worried just about themselves, right? They're just trying to make sure their mom doesn't get mad. Letter B is somebody that actually saw somebody that was alone, right? Saw somebody that needed help and was willing to help, okay? So they ran over to grab the older man's cart and start pushing it up the hill. The problem is that older man might not know who you are or what you're intending to do. And he might think you're trying to steal his food, right? Or, you know, uh, push his cart back down the other side of the hill or something like that to play a prank on him, right? So he might get mad. So the real thing, the best thing you should do is probably ask your mom first. Mom, is it okay if I go help the man push his car? like push his cart to his car. And then when she says, yeah, I'll make sure I watch you, keep an eye on you, make sure you're safe, right? Then you go to the man and say, sir, my name is Johnny. I wanted to know if I could help you, right? Some people honestly aren't gonna want the help, right? But as long as you made the effort, you're doing what's right, okay? You noticed somebody that was alone and that needed some help. You were willing to actually help, right? And then you said, hi. So you did everything the Start With Hello program would ask, okay? 
So here we are. Both of those things, both of those situations were uh, what I call random acts of kindness, okay? And random acts of kindness are things that we would do for other people. We'd help them in some way to show them that they're special without the need for anything in return or without the need for a special day or time, right? Because if it's somebody's birthday and you buy them a gift, that's not really a random act of kindness because it's their birthday. They're probably thinking that they're going to get something, right? Or if it's Christmas and you're buying something, right? It's not really a random act of kindness. So here go some examples of some things that aren't random, random acts of kindness. Buy my wife a dozen red roses because she's mad at me? Nah, not so much, right? Buying her a dozen red roses is an uh, act of kindness. It is, right? But if I'm doing it because she's mad at me and I don't want her to be mad at me anymore, then it's not really random, right? And it's not really putting my heart in the right place. Buying my daughter her favorite perfume on her birthday. That's a kind act, right? Her Buying her her favorite perfume. But when it's on her birthday, you know, I know she's probably not, you know, expecting it or saying that she's expecting something, right? But if it's on her birthday, you know, that's the reason why you bought it. It wasn't really because it was out of the blue and, out, you know, from the bottom of your heart. So how about asking your mom if you could wash the dishes for her because you know she'll give you $2 for hot Cheetos. That's an uh, act of kindness. You're washing the dishes for your mom so she don't have to, right? But the fact that you know she's going to give you $2 for hot Cheetos kind of doesn't make it a random act of kindness, okay? So here are some examples of things that would actually be real examples of random acts of kindness, okay? They're done without asking for anything in return. And the only reason you're doing it is to help someone or show them that they're special or you care about them. So washing the dishes before your mom comes home because you knew she had a long, hard day. That's a random act of kindness. You're washing the dishes for your mom so she don't have to worry about it, right? And you're not expecting anything back in return. You probably know your mom was, will give you love back in return or make make a good dinner so because she don't have to wash the dishes now, but you weren't expecting that. Uh, take out the trash for your dad before he asks you. That's a cool one, right? You see your neighbor cutting their grass and you decide to go help them sweep up afterwards. That's a cool random act of kindness. You're not asking for anything in return. All you're doing is helping a neighbor out, right? You go help your little brother or your sister clean their room so they can keep from getting yelled at. That's a very easy random act of kindness that can happen at home, okay? So now you know what a random act of kindness is, what a random act of kindness isn't. You know why the whole Start With Hello program started, right? Uh, you know things that you can do for people. You know, the three steps that they, they encourage you to do is, you know, see someone that's alone, be willing to help, and actually just start with hello, okay? So here's my personal challenge to you, middle school, okay? During this upcoming week, I want you to complete one random act of kindness, okay? I want you to be able to either write that down or re remember it because I'm going to ask your teachers if I can go into one of your classes next week and we can have a circle on what your random act of kindness was, okay? So remember, you're gonna complete one random act of kindness. You're not expecting anything in return. You're not asking for anything in return. You're gonna pick out somebody that you wanna show them that they're special or that you wanna help them do something, okay? You hook it up for them, you do what, what you gotta do, and then just remember it or write it down somewhere so that way when we talk about it, you'll know what it was, okay? You'll remember what it was, and you're not saying, oh, Mr. Gomez, I forgot, okay? So that's all I got for you guys today. Um, until I talk to you guys again or until I see you in class, I want you guys to remember, stay safe. I want you guys back at here at there now, but I want everybody to be safe here, right? So until we get to that point, you guys got to make sure you're washing your hands as often as you can, making sure that you're wearing your mask when you go out, right? I always got mine right here so I could be posted up if I need to, okay? Uh, and make sure that you're going around as few people as possible, okay, man? Just, I mean, just stay around your family. Uh, if you gotta go out into the real world, then make sure you're wearing your mask, all right? Until next time, middle school.